Good afternoon and welcome. Please take your seats. Welcome to those in the room and those in the virtual room joining us online to the Globe Ethics Youth Leadership Award Ceremony. It's the very first Youth Leadership Award that we're organizing together with, at this time, the support of the Lindsay Foundation, the Kwai Song Health Group, Ping Song Health Group, and the, uh, the Fondation Pierre et Laura Kircher. We're very grateful to them. Thank you for joining us on this very important occasion. Um, we're happy to have with us um, the jury members who selected from among 141 candidates from 37 countries who applied, who are now joining us today as mentors of the finalists. All of those finalists are winners. We have three finalists and there are three winners. And we're going to vote during this session this afternoon. So be ready, we've got three minutes to vote. There'll be a QR code up here on the screen. And for those joining online, um, just use your scan and place your vote. And then we'll announce the winner of the first, second and third prizes. They are, um, there's a, a financial um, gain, win, um, awards of 15, 10,000 and 5,000. But more important than that is um, the accompaniment that they have during the next few months from their mentors, who you have here, Ariane Jobert, Ravi uh, Tissera and Maru Lucia Uribe. I'm inviting them now up to the stage to tell us a little bit more about the process and what they're bringing to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll start with Ariane. We're gonna ask you the same question because um, we're so, so lucky to have you. And I hope that um, Titus Stanley and Ashwara appreciate um, all of the experience and expertise that you're going to bring. If you could tell us a little bit more about your experience and also the conversations you've started to have this morning already, you've been working hard accompanying already. What's, what do they have to look forward to in the next few months working together with you? Um, first of all, thank you very much. And thanks to Stanley for having shared his story with me. So um, a little bit about myself. I'm a, I'm a leadership development expert and leadership coach. Uh, so what I think, uh, following the discussion I had with Stanley about where he's at in his project, where he's at in his leadership development, I think the focus that we're going to have together on his development in the next six months will be around precisely his leadership. What does he need to do to bring people along with him? Uh, he has a team already. How can he motivate, align the team? Um, his objective, and you'll see that, is around scalability. His idea is lovely. I'm not going to say anything and still is a thunder, but you'll see. Uh, so his challenge is around scalability, how you go from uh, good to great or how you go from small to really big, because what we are after here is impact. So the idea is how can we then uh, grow um, uh, we, we, while keeping the passion, while keeping the, the sense of purpose that has igniting him at the beginning. So I think this is what we're going to work on. Uh, and I'm very happy to be able to um, work with such a, a, a bright and, and passionate leader. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ariane. Ravi, the same question for you, please. Well, uh, thank you, Lucy, uh, first of all, for giving me this chance to be a juror and now be a mentor. And uh, actually, I'm contributing less as a lawyer, more as the uh, former president of the International Movement of Catholic Student, where I bring my expertise uh, working with the international uh, partners. And uh, I'm actually honored to work with Aishwarya because as a South Asian woman, young South Asian woman, it's quite difficult to start something. She has initiated addressing a very crucial issue in her country, which uh, you will hear. Uh, so actually, with my expertise uh, working in the international the, the, the arena, uh, I'm looking forward to bring my expertise to work with uh, uh, Aishwarya to see how we can make this uh, her project uh, to become a self-sustainable project. Uh, which does not have to the, the rely on in the in the long run the, doesn't have to rely on the external funds and also how she can scale it to access to the, the bring this uh, project to more of the 
uh, Dalit community that she's catering to. So I'm quite excited to work with her in the coming uh, six months. I am sure that uh, this project, uh, I see that this project has the potential to grow uh, and to empower the, ex how can I say, the include the people who have been excluded for thousands of years. It's not just 10 years, it's not 50 years, it is thousands of years of bondage she's uh, working on against. So yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ravi, for that high level of ambition and bringing it to the to the project here and also for your guidance. Over to you, Mary Lutia. Yes, so I um, have the privilege to be working together with Maluyan from, from Cameroon. And to, this morning was the first time we actually met to learn more about his projects, his challenges, uh, where he is at the moment, and also what he expects from the mentoring process. And we, so Maluyan said that he wants five sessions during the next six months. So we are gonna have six sessions, but what we've been discussing uh, in this process, I work with Arigato International, which is an organization that works with the rights and well-being of children. And I work on ethics education for children where we have developed a pedagogy and transformative pedagogy. So one of the coaching sessions that we'll be doing and mentoring sessions is looking at ethical awareness as a leader. So what is this ethical awareness that he needs to keep and hold as he continues growing in what he's doing? That is one of the aspects we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at also how through the work that Arigato has done on ethics education, if there are potential synergies that he can bring to the work that he's doing, particularly in the classroom and curriculum development that he worked with children. And there are three more aspects that uh, Maluyan is particularly interested in, is to grow his network of connections and particularly with more organizations that can support his work. So I will be trying to connect him with other organizations and see how this can uh, be helpful for him. And in particular, and I think for everyone who is an entrepreneur and is trying to grow and, and create impact, is how you can create a sustainable business model. And so that is also what we'll be looking at, how he can create a sustainable business model, what is the costing of his project, and how to bring it to scale without sacrificing quality. And in that is where we will be looking at some of the challenges he faced. We talk about corruption at times when he has been trying to grow his, his project. So what does this mean for him as a leader? So these are some of the things that we'll be working on. I'm very excited for the work that uh, Maluyan has been doing, um, not just because it's of great impact, but because there is a personal story of himself by doing this that has touched me and that I think uh, deserves to be supported. So very glad and humbled to support you in this process. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Lucia. Thank you, Ariane. Thank you, Ravi, for all of your contributions. We're talking about sustainability. We're talking about um, get making um, being good and getting better. Um, somehow we've been hearing in earlier sessions today from very experienced um, business people. We've got an entrepreneurial spirit here and leaders. So we're um, excited to be accompanying these uh, three young people here and to learning more about their projects right now. So thank you so much and, um, and all the best for the process. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. So there we have them. We're going to call up um, Stanley to start. I just want to have a, a quick word with you before you present. If we can go back to the previous slide. Come forward. So Stanley, how old are you? I am 24. 24. <laughs> there we go. Move forward. Here you are. This is your moment. Um, so you're going to tell us a little bit about yourself and then you present, okay? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Sorry to you. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Niwog and I'm originally from Nigeria. I am an entrepreneur, but also a creative technologist and a product designer. My vision for the world is to design sustainable solutions for the future, turning problems into solution. For us to be able to move on into the future of sustainability, secular economy, we need to look at the past and look at the materials that have been left in the past and drag them along into the future as solutions instead of problems. And that is my focus. And that is 
the work I am doing at Lighted. Hello everyone, my name is Stanley Anibog and I'm super excited to be here. Today I am here to share my vision of illuminating futures by empowering communities with sustainable energy solutions. Here's the question, if the sun goes down, what does that mean for you? For someone in Africa, it could mean their child couldn't live, your family wouldn't feel safe, and your dreams would have to pause. The future that we currently exist in is powered by energy. And energy is the future that we will keep on existing in. I grew up in Onitsha, Nigeria, where I faced severe energy poverty. This affected my health, my education, and everything around me. I got severe eye infections multiple times that affected my education and I couldn't proceed and I even missed the class. This shouldn't be the reality, but my passion connecting with technology as a young man growing up, I used to watch Iron Man and I remember seeing Tony Stark building robots with scrap metal. And I was like, you know what? I think one day I can build innovative solutions. But before that, I found out I was never alone. According to the World Health Organization, a child using a crazy lamp for six hours is equivalent to smoking four packs of cigarettes. Now, who wants their child to be smoking four packs of cigarettes in six hours? This is a very big problem. And the fume also contributes to climate change health crisis, and also fire hazards in these communities. Also another problem that is existing is electronic waste. Electronic waste is an available material with over 50 billion watt of materials in landfills laying to waste, not being used, being recycled wrongly, and 20% are recycling, recycled not correctly. And our aim is to take these materials and convert them into an opportunity. Every problem at Lighted is an opportunity for us. Now, introducing Lighted, our vision is to convert a problem, which is waste, into power, from power into hope. And that is our vision for the future, converting plastic waste, electronic waste, into renewable energy solutions for communities. Now, we are not stopping at solutions because our aim is to transform that hope into growth, then that growth into positive impact and change. Our solutions spread across, but the core of our solutions at Lighted revolve around the community itself, community-centered design. We involve them from the ground up. As you can see, that is our charging station that has the capability of charging a thousand cell phones in a single day. And this was co-designed with the community, co-built with the community. The girls you see at that end, they are designing the current station that you're looking at at this corner. We worked with the kids in the community to design these spaces that will help power up their future while designing solutions that help light up families, provide economic growth, and provide jobs as well. Our impact is very significant. We've provided 10,000 plus individuals across Nigeria access to energy, and 3,000 students have benefited. We also conduct um, sustainability workshops around education, because in order to solve a problem, you have to start at the root core, which education is very important as well. Um, our dream is very simple. Our dream is to expand into the future of what renewable energy is. And we're hoping to expand by building 50 additional charging stations to provide almost 50,000 people access to energy by the year of 2030. And we, this is very simple because when we move into a new country, we're not chipping in materials. We're looking at the available materials there and we're converting them into solutions. And this is advisable because we work with local leaders and they help us to transfer this knowledge from time to time within um, the community itself. Nelson Mandela once said, if you let your light shine, you unconsciously give others the permission to shine as well. Lighted, we do not literally just light up homes. We literally provide people access to electricity, but at the same time, metaphorically, transforming their lives and empowering them to show them that they can also be a solution in their community while protecting our planet. Help us, literally help us, by voting, of course, and enlightening of the world, one community at a time. Let's end that question of what if the sun goes down? I know everyone here enjoys the flick of a switch. And whenever you do that, it feels like it's nothing. Oh, the light bulb is on. But for so many people, their room are always in a dark state. Help me and help Lighted and help us grow to creating no more dark rooms. Thank you very much, everyone.
Thank you so much, Stanley Enigma. And he's right on the dot. He's uh, more accurate than the Swiss watch. Here we go. He's right there. <laughs> so um, congratulations. And another round of applause, I think, for a great presentation. <laughs> so maybe you can try and remember. We've got three. Remember what Stanley's been talking to us about. No more dark rooms, light shining, because you're going to vote. Um, and it's easy to forget the first one sometimes. So without further ado, we'll invite Ashwarya to present her project and her leadership. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Ashwarya Shrestha. I'm from Nepal, a country in South Asia. So I'm a social worker by profession. I've been working as a social worker for the past nine years now. And working in some of the most inaccessible parts of Nepal, I have witnessed the most worst parts of poverty, worst situations that can come out of poverty, but also the hope that even small thing that you do, even small initiatives that we do can have a lot of impact and a lot of transformation in people's lives. So without further ado, I'm gonna start my presentation. <laughs> So good afternoon once again. I want you all to close your eyes for a bit and imagine yourself as a child, not merely older than five years old in school. You're thirsty, you're extremely thirsty. There are water bottles lying all around you, but you cannot touch them. You have to stay parched. You really need to go to the toilet. There are tens of toilets right in front of you, but then you know that if you touch the doors of any one of them, you will get beaten up. Open your eyes. That's the life of a Dalit in Nepal. So I'm the founder of an organization called Heart of Nepal. Heart of Nepal is a nonprofit that deals with ending systemic exclusion of the untouchable community in Nepal. So Nepal has a very strict caste hierarchy and Dalits are some people that are not even considered human enough to be in this caste hierarchy. There are 4.5 million Dalit community in Nepal and that comprises of 20% of our total population. Yet, even till this today, even till this date, they are not considered human enough. They still face bonded labor, lynching, human trafficking, prohibition from public spaces, and lack of social mobility, even till this date. So untouchability has been illegal in Nepal since 2006, yet incidents like these occur. Just four years back during the COVID, COVID when COVID happened, there was a surge in bonded labor, which is equivalent to modern day slavery. There were mass murders happening just because some Dalit were seeking food. That's when I thought that we should do something about it. And that's where Heart of Nepal started. We, a team of us gathered and then we started this organization. We reached out to a village, a Dalit village, and then through their bottom up approach, we talked to them, conducted some FGDs, and then we started this initiative, which dealt with systemic inequality through economic empowerment, education, and leadership building. We tried to tackle different dimensions of poverty and marginalization, and try to break the systemic inequality from the bottom up. So to break down our work further, this is what we do for economic empowerment. We gather self-help groups of Dalit women, we have about 20 groups, 20 women in each group, and we try to train them on livelihood generation and income generation opportunities. Uh, we conduct animal husbandry using goat poultry farming and goat rearing. We have kitchen gardening, which specifically means gardening in a small area and planting crops there. We also conduct financial literacy training so that the income that the women generate can be used in a better way. These women now earn about 25,000 to 30,000 Nepalese rupees, which is equivalent to the salary of a government officer. So in the education dimension, we conduct school enrollment drives, which basically means we go door to door to, to aware the people that education is important. We conduct educate distribution, which comprises of books, bags, school uniforms, without which the Dalit children will not be able to go to school because they cannot afford them. We conduct tuition classes, which uh, literally means after school tuition support, which enables them to learn better. Uh, we conduct school lunches because this area, people cannot afford to buy food. And Dalit children, they usually stay hungry the whole day. So we try to provide them with midday meals. And we also provide full scholarships. Uh, for per year, we provide about 300 scholarships to the children. Since these people have been systematically excluded since a really long time, they are not present in the social sphere. 
So we conduct child clubs through which the children get safe spaces where they can really develop their self-confidence, talk about issues that they feel are important. They participate in multiple social scenarios and they dance, they sing, they participate in debate and speech competitions. We are also helping with women's leadership development to self-help groups where they can actually be present in the social sphere and talk about their rights, know their issues and actually advocate to the government. This is our impact on education. We have 500 former dropouts are now back in school. 5,000 educates have been distributed till date. 730,000 school lunches are given and we have a retention rate of 100%, which means that as, since we have started our project, none of the children have dropped out. This is our impact on economy. We have equipped 20 self-help groups and there are 20 women in each group, which means that about more than 400 women now earn more almost approximately to 25 to 30,000 Nepalese rupees, as I mentioned earlier. This, and then the food that is produced by the women in the kitchen garden are now being used in the school lunches. In terms of Dalit de leadership development, the children who are now part of the child clubs are participating in social events and social spare. They're conducting street dramas. They're dancing, they're singing. And that's a big difference. That's a big transformation because earlier they were not even present anywhere. The women are now participating in social spaces as well. So we are trying to create a self-sustaining model whereby economic and education empowerment can eventually lead to dismantling the systemic barrier. We are trying to tackle multiple dimensions of marginalization and poverty at the same time and trying to empower the local community so that it can be self-sustainable and go a long way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashwarya. So what are we gonna bring, take away from that amazing presentation? The heart of Nepal, education, inclusion, and so much more. Ashwarya, could you remind us how old you are? I'm older than them. <laughs> okay. I'm 27. 27, okay. We all remember that, 27. <laughs> okay, now we're on to Maliani Titus, thank you. And another applause for Ashwarya. Welcome. How old are you, Titus? Uh, I just went in five. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Abongdo Maliani Titus. I am a social entrepreneur and the founder of eMentor. And I am passionate about democratizing access to education for internally displaced students who have been affected by conflict in West and Central Africa. Albert Einstein says that imagination is better than knowledge. And so I'd like us to take that principle right here. Now I'll invite you to close your eyes and let's just drift into an imaginative state for a few seconds. Now imagine that you are a high school student on a beautiful Thursday afternoon and you are studying physics. And suddenly you hear the sound of gunshots. Your teacher runs out to check and runs it back after a few seconds, grabs his bag, and it's about, as he's about to run out of the door, he tells everyone, run home and be safe. You run home to safety, and the next day you're preparing to go to school, but you're informed that you cannot return to school because your high school was attacked and there's no access to it anymore. You can open your eyes and stop imagining because that was my story. See, at the onset of the armed and gun crisis in Cameroon, my school was attacked and I lost access to education for an entire year. Not only did that experience affect my mental health, it also posed a significant threat to my academic career. But although I was able to gain access to education the next year, hundreds of thousands of students were not given that same opportunity. See, UNICEF actually highlights that more than 2.3 million students within Western Central Africa have lost access to education as a result of the ongoing crisis. While in Cameroon alone, more than 4,000 schools have been burnt down, leading the students out of school. That is why we created eMentor. eMentor is a standalone, fully powered solar uh, virtual reality device that leverages solar energy to enable internally displaced students to regain access to affordable quality education from the safety of their homes. And our vision by 2030 is to empower 1 million students within West and Central Africa. There are three futures that make up the eMentor platform. The first is renewable energy. 
in a context where we are making intentional efforts towards going to more sustainable forms of energy and reducing our carbon footprint, we are leveraging um, a solar panel at eMentor to ensure that students in the most remote areas where there's no electricity at all can still access our solution. We are also, um, eMentor is also seen operated, making sure that students in areas where there's no access to Wi-Fi can equally connect and use our solution. And third, eMentor actually contains curriculum created courses designed by teachers that we have actually trained. eMentor has created impact in the lives of internally displaced students in two main ways. The first is access. During our pilot phase, we have enabled over 800 students to regain access to education in partnership with our implementing partner organization. And we have trained over 150 teachers as well. In terms of quality, we discovered that student performance increased by over 27% because eMentor actually causes students to be more immersed and engaged in the learning process, thereby enhancing their retention through visual stimulation. These are images of us performing our pilot phase, as well as the training of uh, 150 teachers in partnership with our implementing partner organization. There are several stories of impact across eMentor, but one that really stands out to me and I really connect with this personal is Helda's story. Helda was displaced from her school in a village in the Northwest region called Ndu, and she had to move to Bamenda, where she enrolled at S7 Academy. When we met Helda, we enabled her to use our solution during the pilot phase where she participated in, and she took uh, courses in chemistry as well as physics. And it was really an important inflection moment in Helda's life because she was about to write her GC ordinary levels to move to high school. And we are so proud that through that process, she registered 10 papers at O level and had all her 10 papers. It is stories of impact like this that continue to motivate us to do the work that we do at eMentor. eMentor has massive ability, massive potential for scalability through replicability. And this is demonstrated in three main ways. First, we can establish teacher training programs in different areas across West and Central Africa, where teachers within local communities are trained to create courses that are not only culturally, but also curriculum specific and contextually relevant to that particular community. Secondly, we are able to establish assembly units in different localities across Western Central Africa, where headsets are manufactured, partnering with international, international organizations. And then third, we are able to leverage local partnerships with local organizations that these students and local communities actually trust. This award is going to create significant impact for eMentor. First, because it is going to drive our research and development process, enabling us to integrate AI into our solution to personalize learner experience, as well as build a team and HR around that. Secondly, we intend to run a pilot project in the Central African Republic next year, and we're working towards that. See, Nelson Mandela says that education is the most powerful weapon that can be used to change the world. However, every day, hundreds of thousands of students still lose access to education within the West and Central African region because of conflict and crisis. I strongly believe that eMentor has the potential to empower these students by democratizing access to education for the most vulnerable learners. But we cannot do this alone. We need your support. Join us on this mission. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Inspiring all. Um, now comes the exciting moment of the, the vote. I've seen some people taking notes. You've already chosen. It's a tough decision. The mentors can tell you how tough it was to come to, to these three from among 141 uh, from all over the world. So we'll put up the QR code. Oh, I've got the clicker. Next, next, there it is, magic. Um, so there you go, open up your scan uh, app, scan the QR, make your choice. You've got three, you can move them up and down, I think. Make your choice. We've got three minutes to do it. People online are doing it too. A reminder, we had uh, the choice between Light Ed, Heart of Nepal, eMentor, Nigeria, Nepal, Cameroon, the world. Um, they're all going to make big, big changes. 30 seconds. Yeah, the, uh, just by the way, the mentors, neither the mentors nor the, um, 
the mentees, the finalists are allowed to vote. So if they're clicking away on their, their mobiles, they're not voting. They're just telling their friends, vote, vote, vote. <laughs> Eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, stop voting. I'm gonna <laughs> put your phones down. Everybody except for Josie, who's going to tell us what the results are. Da -da -da. <laughs> okay. Wonderful, okay. We've had 93 votes and we've got clear winners. I'm gonna announce the third winner and invite our executive director, Fadi Dow, to come up and give that prize. And if, um, yeah, we'll go start by one by one. Thank you, Fadi. So here we have the third prize and I'm going to invite Maluani Titus Titus Abogdo for the third prize. Can we invite um Mary Lucia to come up and also have a, a photo with Titus. Yes. This is to give to this is a small gift to give to Mary Lucy, in fact. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It's between two. Okay, so we would like to invite uh, our president-elect, Dietrich Fenner, to come and give the second prize. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the second winner is... Stanley. Stanley Yannick Ariane, please. He's being mentored by Ariane Jobert. Felicitations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is a gift for Ariane now. <laughs> Okay, so there's no mystery <laughs> about the last, uh, about the first winner, in fact. So I'll invite our president and founder, uh, Christoph Stockerberger, to come to the stage to make the award. Please, Ashwara, congratulations. <laughs> Along with Ravi, Ravi Tissera, her mentor. There you go, for you. For you. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Yeah. 
Can we bring all of the mentors, all of the award givers, all of the award givers and all of the uh, award winners to the stage, please, everybody, for a group photo together. Yes. Yes. Okay. With their awards. Congratulations. Yeah. Now together with the award givers and mentors. And just a reminder that the financial um, awards for the first, second, third prize is 15,000, 10,000, 5,000. So uh, that will help those projects. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Christophe will finish with a word, but we'll have the photo first. And congratulations and thank you to everybody. Please watch this space. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. We'd like to invite our president and founder to give uh, a special word. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you so much, uh, the winners, the supporters, uh, of course, the director, the new president, and the outgoing president, myself. Uh, it's a real uh, pleasure to see this uh, amazing young people with their ideas, with their compassion, with their passion, with their innovation, uh, energy, but also the concept. And I congratulate uh, you uh, in the leadership team, especially Fadi, the concept of mentoring, which we all need. And I think that's the best way to express what we want as Globethics, uh, to encourage ethical leadership, to encourage young people, but also to accompany uh, on the way and money is not only uh, is one thing that we all need, uh, but uh, then the, the intellectual, the institutional, the uh, structural mentoring. And for that, I give you uh, a copy of the book, Sharing Values Across Borders, My Story with Globetics. This one. This one for you. And you, so you can. Thank you so much once more. Thank you very much, everybody, for taking part, for voting. We're now going to celebrate more, and you'll have a chance to meet all of the, the finalists, the winners now, the mentors, the award givers, at a celebratory um, Globe Ethics Youth Leadership Award reception. So um, bon appétit um, and enjoy. Thank you.